The oldest stories of trade and commerce are stories of migration. As people traversed mountains and crossed oceans, they brought their art, culture, tradition and food along with them to their new homes. A fascinating way to trace these ancient migration stories is to follow the journey of the ubiquitous rice pilaf as it made its way down the Silk Route from China to India, Central Asia, the Middle East and all the way to Africa. Modern narratives of globalization echo the migration stories of the past. So we spoke to three men from different parts of the world who came to America and brought their recipes for rice pilaf with them. Okay, my name is Tarek. Uh, I've been in a restaurant business for over 27 years. I came to this country back in 97. I'm in the My corporation name is Himalayan Curry House. America is come to 2008. Grandparents were born in Armenia and migrated to the United States after the genocide in 1917 or so. Each of their unique takes on rice pilaf reflected how their ancestors had given such a simple and basic dish a regional twist and made it their own. Their recipes showed off centuries of tradition and the shared history of these seemingly far-flung regions of the world. So uh, rice pilaf uh Normally it's called mujaddara. It's a, it's a, it's a traditional dish uh, used in uh, Middle Eastern cooking. It's uh, rice and lentil with uh, fried onions on top. And they add some seasoning called sumak, which is, uh, which is a spice, uh, a closer, uh, has, has an acid to it. Uh, the, uh, the spice itself is, uh, is uh, extracted from a pomegranate leaf. So they grind it up and then they add it on top of the, uh, of, of the dish to give a little acidity to the dish. Sheer Bunja's Indian version of the pilaf also displayed the same level of complexity and finesse as Tarek's Jordanian version. Cumin powder, chili, and the put in the basmati rice, fresh mint, rouge water, cover for the steam for two minutes. Pilaf's popularity is evidenced by how far and wide it spread and how many versions of it exist. However, it begs the question, how did something that seems so basic appeal to so many people across the world and become such an integral part of so many cultures' food traditions? The answer might be simple. You know, many people sometimes eat it because they, they cannot afford a meal, uh, like chicken or let's say uh, there's no poultry option or meat options to add on top of the dish. So there was a substitute, also, there was a dish that was, was given you know, to us if, if you could not afford to like, buy, uh, say, chicken or, or beef. I heard a story later from my father that the reason why rice pilaf was served with every meal was because the family was very poor and because rice was cheap. And so my father didn't know any better as a young boy. He would have dinner. He was the youngest of eight children. And he would go to dinner and everyone was eating rice pilaf. And he was as well, but he got a steak or a hamburger or lamb, and nobody else was eating it except for him. And when he would ask, well, why aren't you all having some? Oh, we don't like that. We, you, you have it. He didn't find out until later that it was because they didn't have the money and they didn't want him to not have meat. This scarcity was the root for much innovation and gave birth to the many delicious varieties of rice pilaf we all enjoy today, transforming a basic necessity into a universally enjoyed delicacy. And as people did better financially, they didn't replace rice pilaf with something more expensive. They just liked the taste, so it just stayed into the family. 